All right, got another interview I'm really excited about today with Chickeny. Um, Chickeny needs a little introduction, but I'll, I'll give one anyway. First of all, I would like to apologize. Chickeny said for a picture, he said if I could find a high def image of Balam Garden, I found a kind of low def image of Balam Garden, so that one's on me. But uh, let's talk about Chickeny. Uh, Chickeny is, in my opinion, one of the 20 greatest tournament players and 20 greatest players of all time. I think something he does to my eyes that really stands out is I've noticed in a lot of his games, I think he's incredibly precise, but I've also just seen him play a lot of kind of neutral positions where I looked at it and thought there's not much there only to check back to find he's won. I think he's really good at finding, not accepting that a tie is the given result of a position and finding a way to create little imbalances and trickiness in it that feels a little different to how some other players do it. Maybe we'll find a way to get into that as we talk about his play. But looking at his games, I find them incredibly impressive. And um, he's one of the greats. He also is, I think, very clearly at this point... Um, sorry, Piggy Man, I had you as this for a while. But I think Chickeny has taken over as the best player to not yet win a tournament. So let's get into the interview. How would you describe your triple triad player style? I usually play defensively. If I can choose, I pick less risky and more thought out decisions, even if I feel like it's more likely only a tie. I rather wait for enemy mistake or find a decisive answer for a risky move made by someone else. Might be why I tie so much sometimes. I'm not sure if I like the way I play, but it reflects a lot my overall personality. I don't like to gamble and take risks. I can really empathize with this. I think this is probably just the correct tournament strategy. And if you're as good as Chickeny is, how many risks should you want to take, right? Over a lengthy match with someone, Chickeny is just going to play more accurate moves than almost anyone and beat them eventually. Why would you want to do something that maybe gives greater chance to win but maybe also gives greater chance to lose. And as I've said, I think Chickeny picks up some wins that a lot of players wouldn't. So he may lead to he may land in more neutral positions, and that may lead to a lot of ties than some players do. But I actually think he gets a lot of value from those neutral positions. Who is your most interesting opponent? I think I have to go with Yojimbo here. There is way too much history, especially if I include the Czech TTO site. We sometimes talked about the game he was currently playing, and after a minute or two, he said, like, I think the opponent is going to do this move, so I'm already thinking about my next one, which granted him extra minutes if he was right. I don't know how common is this among the players. I do that too, but more like just vaguely going through possible responses to several moves. Yeah, I talked a bit with Chickeny, and I think he gets into this a little bit about the TTO site and how they would have this kind of league format where you'd play 50 games against anyone, sort of like GBs here, and the top eight players would go into a playoffs format. And you'd play 50 games, a 2-1-0 scoring system. And from the brackets chicken he sent, he'd often score, you know, around 80 points over those 100, which is an insanely high score. But Yojimbo was regularly putting up 90-plus and once put up the full 100, which is just absolutely insane. Who is your toughest opponent? Hard question, and to be honest, I don't really remember who eliminated me in tournaments. It probably should be based on that, and I would not be surprised if that was Yojimbo too. However, apart from the other obvious choices like was up, Deliol, or Seto, I always had a huge respect for turds. At times I felt like he is not rated that way, but I would be equally hesitant to face him as other top players. I'd like to give a special mention to Slash of Time. I often viewed it as a just-right matchup, despite I think he likely had far better success in tournaments than me. Interesting set of names here. I, I do believe that Chickeny's record, especially in the later years, was that he was... Um, I, I remember looking at his peak run, where he wins like 73% of games over like an eight-tournament span, which is phenomenal, but was even better was he was basically only losing to Yojimbo and occasionally other players. And he got a win against Yojimbo too in that stretch, beating him in a TTAC, maybe TTAC 9. I think 9. Um, so it, from the tournament record, I believe it would be Yojimbo. Uh, 
I think Chickeny versus Slash of Time is a pretty interesting matchup where they both definitely veered defensive, but I think in different ways, and I'm not sure quite how to define that. I would really enjoy watching that matchup. I think that would be a fun one. And also, of course, Turds is excellent. What formation or move type do you like more than other players do? This can be for either open or closed, or answer for both. Question is, what do other players prefer? For closed, I somewhat try to break the strong formations and possible combos if I have second move. I think first move closed brings a considerable advantage, especially paired with random, where you can literally have any card. I guess in pre-built hand, you can at least somewhat anticipate what type of card the opponent may be still holding. In open, hard to say. Let's just go with no preference for a formation. Sure, seems reasonable. Um, now I'm thinking about a uh, first turn advantage in random versus non-random closed, and I do not have the data to back this up. Maybe we'll get some of it from TTAC. My instinct is in open, it is easier to have sweeper cards that give endgame the right play. But it is also a lot easier for close, for the second turn player to be able to set up sufficient combos that they can slide in ways where they negate first turn's advantage somewhat. So he's, he's probably right here. Um, I haven't thought about this enough. I wonder what other people have to say on this. Do you think the uh, first turn advantage in closed is bigger in random or in hand games? What formation or move type do you like less than other players do? There, I have an answer. I don't really like L or R formations. You could also see this in my CL Asila game, where the game with strange, with the, uh, where the game with strange layout with cards on three, six, seven, eight, three, six, seven, eight resulted in me going on two. That is unusual, because yeah, nine is the kind of obvious free square to go there. This might be because I also don't like to start into adjacent corner, which might often lead to L. But I probably should learn to do that. Such moves sometimes feel like a really good answer. That's really interesting. And um, interesting also that he brought up turds because turds loves to play adjacent corners and aim for those L positions. I also tend to aim for the Ls more. But the more I've looked at data of different move types, it does seem like the adjacent corner is not a fantastic performing type. Like it seems like it performs a little worse than cent uh, similar to center replies, a little worse than far corners and going next to, and s scores better than far sides, but scores a bit worse than everything else. And I, if you're a player that don't li doesn't like adjacent corners, I'm not sure you need to add that to your game, though it's definitely a tool. And it's interesting to hear a player not interested in doing that. I heard that um. Obviously, Dully plays a bunch of everything, but I remember talking to him, asking him just randomly, like, what's your favorite way to reply to uh, to corner starters? And he didn't bring up adjacent corners at all either, um, which doesn't mean he doesn't use them. He certainly uses them a fair bit. But I think there's lots of good players that find really good value without touching those moves, and that interests me because they're a move type I am often really drawn to. But if I look at my record with it, it tends to be where I get worse results than I get with almost any other move type. Um, so it is perhaps a move type I should play less of. Though actually another interesting thing on that is it is one of the move types, and this surprises me, I wouldn't have guessed this, with the highest tie rate. It is a move type more likely to lead to draws in actual play. And Chickeny has said he's a defensive player who is tie oriented, but it's interesting that he plays moves that often keep a little more action in the game. And that might be some of where he finds value to win positions that look neutral to me. Favorite way to meet a corner starter, a side starter, a center starter? Corner starter. As mentioned in the previous reply, you would probably rarely find me doing a Jason corner strategy. I'll most likely do a quick thought about actually turning the card to see if it leads to any safe situation. I like that. Um, I, I think looking at captures as the first thing you look at, which Chickeny mentions, is phenomenal, phenomenal advice. Because even if you don't decide that the capture works, it tells you so much about the position, right? It tells you what are their recaptures. It gets you looking at how you might punish those recaptures. It gets you looking at 
how could they play around the card I just put? Because at some point, there's a good chance you're going to end up taking their starter, and you want to have an understanding of all the dynamics that are going to work around that. And so I think even if you don't like taking starters very much, spending a little time just thinking what would happen is a really useful thing to do. And I might overdo that in tournament play. If you've watched my videos of me playing tournaments, I think I spend more time than I should these days just thinking, what if I capture? But I also think you want to spend some time there. And Chickeny saying he'll do a quick look is probably the optimal way to do it and a better way than I do. It's more likely I would go to five or opposite side center. How would you call that? But yeah, opponent starts three. I might go four or eight. So I call that far sides because it's a side rather than corner and a distant one rather than close. But that's interesting. Um, I think a couple of the Brotherhood of Seed players, especially Midas, I've noticed playing on far sides a bit. Far sides in the data set I have score weaker, but I also don't have any players that specialize in it. So this makes me really interested in seeing more chickeny games. Um, I also remember, this is not particularly relevant to this, but there was um, a game I played in the month where there was the Open GB run by the Fun Crew. And there was a game I played with a really bad random where I checked with the solver afterwards and I was almost lost after move one, but all of my saves were in one of the far sides. And that really attuned me to start looking for them more because it said, with certain type of hands and with certain types of opposing hands, and if you control the right squares. And I think usually when you play a far side, it's really important that you control the squares next to it, that it's hard for them to play safely there. Um, you can both make a reasonable move, but also one that I think in many ways keeps the game wide open. Chickeny called himself defensive here, but from my perspective, at least, the moves he's describing are often pretty combative ones, at least early on. And I think that's quite interesting. And I, I would like to get more of his games because, again, I think really highly of them. And he clearly sees some of the games similarly to I do and some of the game quite differently. And it would be really fun for me to explore his games. For center starter, I don't really have a favorite way. Very situational, but I will happily check for some safe spots around the card, or at least half safe. Yeah, love looking for half safeties against a center starter. Um, after a center starter, it's often very difficult to control all the space. A lot of center starter hands are either a dump card where the hand doesn't clearly fit together, in which they're unlikely to control all the squares, or it's a setup move, right, where they have a card they put in the center, and then they have intended corner moves that set them up to be able to combo off their own cards. But that often means they're not going to be set up to be able to capture everything you can throw at them, and finding a half safety and starting to build around that, I think, is just a straightforward and effective strategy. For side starter, my first thoughts go towards five or opposite corner, unless I have a safe spot in an adjacent corner. Again, um, I mentioned this when looking at a great Sephiroth game at the start of the return when he played a few games. I don't look at five against side starters, or it, it only very occasionally do they pop out at me. And that doesn't mean they're bad. Like, clearly messing around with the solver a bit, it's a reasonable square. But I don't have any um, heuristics that guide me to go there. So this is another thing where I would love to see a player regularly showing off what they can do with these kinds of moves because it is very viable but it's not one that is in the forefront of my mind do you have a preferred starter type does that change between random and hand games does it change between open and closed preferred starter definitely varies by the criteria open closed hand and random all matter in open i'd probably often start with a strong corner open random would be very situational for closed hands, there is likely some strategy I made the hand in mind with, so that depends. Closed random is often a five starter for me, unless I see some good synergy elsewhere. I agree, pretty similar there, but uh, I think that is good strategy. How do you spend time during the opponent's move? Thinking specific lines, thinking about general things, spacing out. During opponent's move, I check out possible moves, but not going too deep. 
general thinking, and usually if I see a way to tie at least, I leave it at that and check for different possible moves. When I see an opponent move that would have me losing, I focus on that until I find a way to tie it. Yeah, I like this. I I think kind of general thinking, not needing to jump into too specific unless you see a clear problem, is a really good way to kind of not burn out your calculational skill while doing something really useful. I also want to mention that chickeny playing on the check site, that was something where you had 24 hours to make a move. So chickeny has played a kind of wider variety of forms of triple triad than most players here have, I think. Um, I've never played correspondence triple triad where I had that long to make moves and that much time to explore. And I think it's interesting to see a player who is successful in that format and successful in quicker time formats. What is your proudest triple triad moment? I would like to say my proudest moment is a win in a major solo tournament. The thing is, I never won any, not even on Czech TTO. So I gotta say, it has to be the tournament where I won versus Yojimbo and really believed I could win the finals as well. Sadly, I did not, but I'm still happy at least for the reaching of the finals by beating him. Again, I think that's TTAC9. But actually, I can find it. So let's, uh, let's take a quick moment to go look at TTAC9 and see the run that Chickeny had there. Yes. So Chickeny in the first round beats Apex, also known as Flare, also known as Blackout, a very solid tournament player, then beats Blizzard. This is pretty close to the time of Squall when Blizzard was having his peak run, so that's another really nice win. Then beats the ever solid and strong Yevon. Uh, then takes out Vid. This was when um, Vid had gone away for a bit, but came back around here and went on a really fantastic tournament run. In the first two rounds of this tournament, for instance, Vid beat Nightwish and Sir Smokes. So, you know, clearly top tier opponent. Beats Yojimbo in the semifinals and loses to Broccoli in the finals. Broccoli being the only player to ever win two TTACs. Though, I think some of us you know, have hopes of being the second to do that someday in the future. Um, but yeah, really excellent run here. This is a very strong finals run by Chickeny. All right, continuing. Um, but I'm still happy at least for reaching the finals by beating him. There's a small victory in a player's tournament. I still remember, though. That thing he was called, win a rare. Which one? That was not specified. Not sure which player it was run, run by, but for some reason, Ray Eminator comes to mind. I don't remember all my opponents, but I'm fairly certain I won the finals versus you. The one and only was up. Little did I know the beautiful prize for winning this tournament would be one of the least lucrative rare cards, Trapdoor. But hey, I won. I don't remember this one. I do remember Chickeny destroying me in Clan League, though. So I do remember a loss to Chickeny, not this one. But, uh... I also remember, like, losing to Chickeny a few times and being kind of, like, frustrated that this player kept beating me. Um, so I fully believe Chickeny beat me in the finals of this, and I suspect also beat me in something else that I'm not remembering. Uh, you know, Chickeny's a really special player uh, and is one of the only players to make, you know, there are two players who have made three finals and not won a tournament. It's tied for most ever. And uh, as I said, I think it's a kind of depressing spot to be in, but I think also pretty cool to be the best player to have never won a tournament. And I think Chickeny is by a clear margin. And that, yeah, can be really frustrating, but is also, I do think, a cool spot in Triple Triad history and one really deserving of a lot of respect. Should Delhi all be banned? Yes or absolutely. You don't really give me a choice, huh? But I'd go with some other sort of punishment. Make his cards always open, even in a closed game, and don't even tell him. Truly evil. Yeah, get on this, Dalimar. Balls, this is excellent idea. I, I, I can accept this compromise. We don't have to ban him. We just have to torment him even more than his already bad randoms do. Should Elemental be abolished? Yes or immediately? No, never. Quoting Crescent, Reminder that Elemental is an official FF8 rule, but Plus Wall is a blasphemous community creation. A big plus one, 
lapse in correct element on this one. All right, well, this is clearly an unacceptable answer, and I now kind of think we should ban chickeny instead of Delial. But let's try to move quickly on and see if we can get past this uh, really atrociously vile thing to have said. What clan will always have a place in your heart? To surprise absolutely no one, it's Brotherhood of Seed. Player you think is most underrated? My mate Blizzard. I know he did not have much success, and I know he would be really capable if he decided to truly focus on the game. Yeah, Blizzard's great. Um, his run in Squall was really impressive. Uh, also, when he was really active, because he was one of the most active people at the return of the site, and just immediately made a run to the finals, I think, in the first chat tournament, and lost to me in the finals, but he had a really bad random, and played phenomenal on the way there. Um, he beat one of Chickeny or Akiyama to get there and someone else really good. It was really great run. Uh, who are your top three to five picks for GOAT? I don't think about this. I won't think about this too much. And the first players that come to mind are Yojimbo, was up, Seto, and Delial. Not surprising, I guess. When did you start playing and what was your favorite era? I'm not really sure. I likely started around 2008 on Czech TTO. I only moved to TTA later, mostly because TTO activity indeed started to decline. We couldn't get any new players, and the existing ones slowly were losing interest in the game. Not sure when I moved to TTA, I guess could be found by TTA tournament archives. Might be 2010 or 2011. Despite TTA being more popular, I enjoyed the community, web design, and some other stuff on TTO a lot too, and I miss the site. I don't have a specific era I would mark as favorite, though. Yeah, I really like getting these kind of, like, insights into the world of another site. Um, and I'm really appreciative of uh, Chickeny sending me some of the kind of the um, the League, or it wasn't called League, but, like, kind of the Heat, the, the 50 game uh, qualifications uh, runs um, and some of those and, you know, talking a little about how the site worked. I think it's really cool because I like seeing how other people have enjoyed the world of Triple Triad and, you know, some of the, the, the old guns, you know, will tell you about the days of TTX or TT.com and the stuff before that. And that's great. Um, but I haven't ever gotten any coverage before I don't think of TTO. And I'm really glad to get some. Favorite rule set. RE closed. I'm sorry. Apology declined. Have you met any other Triple Triad players in person? Only Yojimbo, and that was once, I believe, could probably be more times, but I was a very different person back then, and I was not up to real-life meetups with anyone. Otherwise from TTA, no. My brother briefly played on TTO, though, despite never playing any Final Fantasy game. I'd like to meet Blizzard one day, as we used to chat a lot and played quite a bit of League of Legends together. Fun dude. I think League of Legends and World of Warcraft, between them, have, uh, stolen so much talent from Triple Triad Advance. I have never played either, um, so I, I, I have no real comment to make here. But I was talking to someone the other day about just how many players had been lost to World of Warcraft, and League of Legends here I think has also been a really big one for a bunch of people. What is your biggest weakness as a player? You can evade the question if you think it's targetable. I have very low to zero confidence. I don't believe I can win at all most of the times, and yet I feel a lot of pressure when I think others expect me to win. I know this is a small game that's supposed to be fun, but I'm like that in competitive games. It gets really stressful to me, and I also get unreasonably sad when I don't perform well. I believe that also affects my concentration, but I can't seem to find a way to not care this much. Yeah, I really get that. I've been thinking of skipping a tournament or two just because... So much of my time, any tournament I'm in, it's at least in the back of my mind that whenever I lose, I'm going to feel just miserable. And so I really, I really get feeling that way. I really get feeling it's super stressful um, knowing that others, you know, and obviously we all know Chicken, he's a great player, so I'm not helping right now, but the pressure of, you know, us all knowing that, meaning any defeat is not just this kind of internal thing, but everyone knows 
and everyone had expectations you haven't met. Yeah, I think that's really tough. I think when you're a competitive person like that, it's really difficult. And for me, at least, I'm also, you know, drawn to competition. So it's this this tough thing of competition is really exhausting and consuming, but also really appealing. So I get why Chickeny drifts in and out of competing and stuff. I think that makes sense. Um, I think for me, something I've focused on is if I can string together a sequence of good moves, you know, if I can put together two or three good games in every match, I've done what I can to give myself good winning chances. And if I don't end up winning, that's fine. Sometimes players play great, sometimes they don't. Um, of course, that still means if I lose in the first game or two, I'm going to feel going to feel bad. But trying to focus on process over results, I guess. But obviously, different things work for different people. Yeah. Um, is there another question I haven't asked you'd like to answer? Can't think of anything right now. But if you would like to follow up some question, maybe to something I said, feel free to do so. No, I think these answers were pretty complete. I think I'd someday like to uh, bug Chickeny again just to chat about TTO and just talk about what the site looked like and what the site felt like and differences in having more time to think if that if that led to Chickeny perhaps playing in different styles than he would have otherwise. Um, he's also mentioned it's a site where sudden death was in play. So sudden death means, you know, a tie isn't, the final result you each take the five cards you currently control and you run it back and how did that affect playing or where did that come into decision making so i i i, I hope to i'd like to talk to chickeny again sometime because clearly he has lots of interesting things to say but i think this has suitably answered all the questions i had for him and uh thanks so much for doing this interview i uh, thought it was a really interesting one and uh with a player I'm glad to have heard from. So, cheers. And I'm glad to see Chickeny playing again sometimes, even if it's mostly uh, just random and elemental, which is gross. Uh, but I say that, I'm, I'm not good at it. I, I'm sure if I was good at it, I would like it more. All right, uh, thanks again to Chickeny.